Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us in these Media Ed Club session. Today, we have a multimedia journalist, Shelby Hawkins, with us. She is Chicago-based and back in Chicago for, um, for the foreseeable future. Um, Shelby uh, works as an associate producer at WTTW Chicago Tonight and Chicago Tonight Black Voices. Previously, she produced for NPR's Morning Edition and Up First in Washington, D.C., where she prioritized uplifting marginalized voices. And um, Shelby, like me, holds an MA in Civic Media from Columbia College Chicago, a program that is very um, near and dear to the Media Education Lab um, and is run by Yonti Friesen, our executive director. Um, today, Shelby is joining us to present um, the Rise of Chicago's Queer Country Music Scene. It is a segment that Shelby produced for, um, for the show and is, it is one of the projects that she's most proud of to date. It's both a segment on Chicago Tonight and a digital article that details the popularity of the genre queer country and how it's gained prominence in the city of Chicago. Um, Shelby will share a little bit about the news gathering portion, a very fun experience, uh, which involved talking to a professor, talking to musicians and event planners who are creating their own spaces and bringing that community to a, a wider audience um, without diluting the message. Um, without further ado, I'll introduce um, Shelby and let her take the floor. Thank you for the introduction, Francia. That was a very nice intro. Um, I'm gonna share some slides with you. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, I wanted to share this particular story with you because I think it shows that you can share stories about topics like representation and identity in a really fun way. Um, like Francia said, I produced a segment as part of our coverage for Pride Month during the month of June, so uh, last June, a couple months ago. And I was just thinking of creative ways to highlight and celebrate the city's LGBTQ plus community. And what's a better way to do that through than, <laughs> than through music, I think. Um, here's some photos of the guests that I had. Um, here is Iris Marlowe on the right. And uh, on the left is Chicago's resident queer crooner. Um, so I got the idea from an event organized by Queer Social Space. It's called Swap and Boots, which is a popular two-step night here where queer country artists perform and people generally hang out, learn how to dance. Um, so the story centers around that. Um, and you'll see on the poster as well on the left that it was hosted by um, Lex Stein, who was also on the panel. She's an urban planner by trade, which I thought was super interesting. So her entire uh, job, or both of her jobs, her day job and her more like fun, fun, oh, well, both are fun, but her hobby <laughs> centers around creating spaces for people. Um, so the main question I wanted to pose is when I start a new project or a segment or a story, I think there's always a central question that should be asked in mind for this particular uh, story was, why was there a need for a space like this? And I'm really interested in ideas about occupying space and finding community, especially since the pandemic, when I think a lot of those spaces were taken or lost um, and we're at a point where we we're reimagining what those spaces can look like. Um, but I wanted to talk about three different concepts about uh, when it comes to my news gathering and uh, creating stories like this that I'm particularly interested in. Um, and the main portion is how to create space, how to create community through the use of public media. And one way, of course, is just through marketing the event online, but the other is having conversations like the one we're having now and deepening our understanding and our connection to each other. So 
I don't know. I didn't know much about Chicago's queer country music scene before working on this project, but I do now. And I made friends with the process, which is probably one of the most rewarding things about being a journalist is being a part of a community um, that you hadn't been a part of before. So here's what I found. Um, some interesting tidbits that are in the article that I never would have thought of, but, uh, sorry, let me back up too. <laughs> I think something else that, that was really caught people's eye or my attention with this story is the, it seems almost like oxymoronic, like queer country music, right? Like you, you don't think about country music being an inclusive genre, um, but Chicago's the heart of the Midwest, and many of our transplants, including myself, are from small towns throughout the region. I grew up in a small town, northeastern Wisconsin. And people, especially queer folks or other people from marginalized identities, end up leaving their small towns for this metropolis because they feel or felt ostracized and unwelcome in their hometowns. But that didn't necessarily mean that they themselves hated the culture that they're from. Um, and of course, uh, country music is the dominant genre in much of the Midwest, um, including in Chicago too. Chicago has its own history with being a country music hub. WLS Barn Dance was here before the conception of the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville. So in a way, um, the rise of queer country music here is kind of a reclamation of a genre that has always been for um, people that didn't have a voice or, or weren't considered people to, to be, weren't considered powerful people. Um, and lastly, people are just craving a new way to connect. Like people want to have a space for them to learn something new that maybe isn't centered around a drinking culture because we're, you know, in a sober curious movement too. The second topic I wanted to talk about is disseminating information to um, a general audience. And how can we tell stories about a niche demographic to a larger audience without diluting that message or othering the group that the story is about? And uh, one way I do this is to assume that your audience has access to the same information that you do. So don't over explain. Um, if people clicked on the article, that means that they're interested in it and they can continue to learn about this topic beyond the article that's right in front of them. Um, and I, I also feel like stories about communities should be for that community. So in the context of this piece of media we're talking about, I didn't want to begin the article or segment by just explaining what the genre is, because I felt like that would be a signal that maybe this isn't for the community if we're just, um, we're, we're talking about them, but they're not really in the conversation it is how I would see it. Um, and I want everyone to be able to take something away while still honoring the people who helped create the segment alongside me. So I chose to open up the article in a way that profiles one of the artists featured in the segment, Iris Marlowe, uh, because I want stories to be people-centered. I want, and I, I just felt like Marlowe was a great example of the dichotomy that the story is about old school's ideas kind of being turned on their head. Um, country music, like I said, is perceived in a negative light sometimes as misogynistic or racist and exclusionary. You know, we think about um, how Beyonce or Lil Nas X are treated sometimes in the genre. So that's all part of the narrative. But there are people that are actively changing that messaging. And that's the point that I wanted to get across and not focus on um, the sort of negative comments you can find already online. And I think it's more compelling 
to been rattling off ideas and concepts that these musicians brought to my attention. Like all the things that they told me and, and really wanted to be shared are in that piece, um, but they can be the, the voice for that rather than me. And lastly, and the, the most important part, part of this is building community. Um, the media that you create is a signal to what you support, even if it's not explicitly stated. Um, another reason I chose to share this piece of media is because it's a good memory for me. Um, as Francia shared, I just moved back from to Chicago. I was living in DC for two and a half years. And this is the first story that I got to do and it was very fun. Um, I got to sit down with four really incredibly interesting people and learn something that I, you know, wouldn't have really been on my radar. And because I'm, I'm outside of the community, I'm not a country music artist. Um, I'm not queer either. So that's a part of this is also um, learning about be, being a journalist, like you don't want to be a mouthpiece necessarily, especially when you're an outsider of the community. So how you can balance that aspect of it. But after everything was said and done, they came to the studio, they did their segment, they expressed to me how much it meant to them that WTTW was highlighting their experiences. And it's just one of those moments as a journalist that felt, it, it reminds you of why we do what we do, um, telling the human experience and um, building these special connections and telling stories that I don't think are normally in the mainstream. So I'm really grateful to, for that. And like I said, I, I made friends through the experience. And I'm gonna stop the share. Thank you. Thank you, Shelby. Um, that was great. That was very informative. Um, there are a few things that you touched on that I want us to further um, chat about. And one of the things that I think really caught my attention and maybe um, the attention of other people who are watching is realizing that contrary to what many people may see in, um, in journalists, you were talking about the community-centered media and really honing on people and centering them at the core of the story rather than just focus focusing on maybe the facts or the technical aspect of what this genre means. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell me why that is important as a journalist, but also for the audience to, to see that human element? Yeah, I... Um... I, I find it for myself and from what I've heard from readers and audience that that's what's most interesting is why people do what they do. So um, the article starts as a profile and it ends the same way with talking about Iris Marlowe and her love of old school country like Johnny Cash, but she's also a big fan of people like Lady Gaga and Beyonce. And um, I think that kind of pulls people in because it's more personable. And the, the technical aspects of it, right, of like producing content um, and or producing music, sorry, and writing music, those are more, I think, technical things that people who are more in the industry would be interested in. So I think it's also like a balancing act of who is your audience. And in this case, I'm not writing for musicians. I'm, I'm writing for people that uh, may just be interested in like what, well, what is queer country music? Um, why has it gotten so popular? And what's the draw of it? And the draw of it is the community. Um, because people wanna go out to swap in boots and hear their stories um, and hear them, see themselves represented in a space that they typically don't. 
Um, I see a comment in the chat from Maria, and she says, we are homo narrants. We perceive the world better through stories. And I think that's so on point, especially for the conversation today. So thank you. Um, thank you, Maria, for sharing. Um, and for anybody who joined us a little bit later, there will be a recording of the session. So you will be able to see um, the presentation that shall be shared from the beginning. And we also have the link to the story that we're talking about and the video, um, which I will put in the chat in just one second. Um, Shelly, I have another question for you. And you really um, were very thoughtful about how you shared the, the process of creating these pieces with us. So I really appreciate that. But I think you touched on something that um, that is really, really important and that we may not always see, which is um, the community that you're reporting on should be part of the story and they should feel that the story is for that community rather than othering them or trying to explain them as a separate entity. So um, can you tell me a little bit about how and if your civic media of background um, informs your work and the way you approach these um, these types of um, decisions in, in producing? Yeah, definitely. And I'm sorry, there's uh, some work going on in the background. So if you hear something, that's what it is. Um, but civic media kind of informs all of the work that I do, I would say. I, um, Yanti is here, he was one of my professors, of course. And he really drove home the idea of uh, empathy. And for myself, that's what I try to put forward in all of the work that I do is being empathetic, listening to people to understand them um, and not to react. I, I really care about, uh, well, I, I guess I'll back up too for folks that got here recently. <laughs> I recently made a shift from national news or network news to local news, which is very intentional because I missed being with people. I missed being able to go into neighborhoods and spend time with people and, and learn about them. Um, but in this context of the story, it's not something that is widely reported on. Like there's not a lot of books about queer country. There are some more um, conversations in, their cir in the circles that I, I recently found out about, about the history of queer folks and country music. And even the way that country music artists dress, right, has been described. Um, affectionately as kind of like a more accessible form of drag <laughs> because of the rhinestones, the, uh, you know, the, the boots, the hats. It's a very like flamboyant uh, outfit choice <laughs> in a lot of ways. But um, the way to learn about this topic is to be with people who are living it. So, um, it's gotten a little bit more attention in recent years. We see people like Brandy Carlisle or Orville Peck, um, and e even people like Lil Nas X who have dabbled in country. So we know that there is um, a desire for people to be able to tell their stories in this genre and have the acceptance of it. And that's what I wanted to really bring forth is is it's fun you know <laughs> it's a really fun thing to talk about and learn about and it's super interesting um i i love country music too so that was also a big draw for me as i wanted to deepen my understanding of like what draws me to this uh, genre that maybe i would be considered an outsider of as well so it's it felt like a kind of a personal venture, um, which, you know, that's what journalism is a lot about, is about a lot of the time is you end up inadvertently learning something about yourself. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, at this time, I'd like to see if any of our participants have any questions for Shelby 
Um, if you do, feel free to unmute yourself. Questions or comments? Everything is um is welcome. Um, but feel free to unmute yourselves or um enter them in the chat if you have anything that you'd like to ask Shelby while we have her here, or um anything that you'd like to comment. If you read the piece or if you watched the um listen segment, let us know what you thought. If you learned something new, um, if you discovered something you didn't know about. We'd love to hear that. Um, does anybody have any questions, comments, anything you want to share? Okay, looks like we don't. So um, I'll ask you, one more question, Shelby, and I think this one is about um, the power of media to increase representation and really highlight um, the diversity of people that live in the world, right? And in this place, <laughs> very specific, but um, can you tell us um, about your experience lifting up voices or groups that are typically not represented and how, um, if there is any, time that you can remember people said I felt seen and I had not felt seen before um or anything um any impact story that you can share about how the media that you create has helped create space for other folks to be represented yeah I um I I will say I want to go back to something else the the last question you asked too about civic media another point I wanted to bring in that ties into this is that we were really encouraged in my, our program to go out and spend time with the people that you're doing your project about. Um, and that informed this work too, is like physically going out, going to the event and seeing what it is rather than just reading about it, primary sources, <laughs> of course. Um, but this one, I got to hear from people, of course, who were really excited about it. Um, and then another project that I did in my last job, I really like working with students and, and um, kids. So I did a story for Black History Month about um, these kids that were making a big impact in Alexandria, Virginia where they created a Black History Month curriculum. And part of that curriculum is they traveled in their um, hometown of Alexandria down to, Burm uh, and within that, and they also went on a trip to Birmingham, Alabama, um, where they got a course on Black history, the civil rights movement, and um, I highlighted them. I, I was really in awe of these kids. I don't get to speak to teenagers very often, but I <laughs> I will say, I think the kids are all right after meeting with all of them. And I, um, I work in multimedia, so this was an audio story. So they each talked to me and um, I just highlighted their voices and their own experiences and published that as a story. And after it came out, they all emailed me and told me how grateful they were and thankful for the opportunity. And it it made me a, a little, um, I can be a little sensitive sometimes, but it made me a little emotional because they said that they were just happy to see me. Like when I walked through the doors, they felt, felt themselves represented back in me that they could be journalists too. And I, I think like when you're, you know, as you're growing up and I'm over 10 years removed from high school now. So it's that you forget about those things that matter to you. Just like just seeing someone who looks like you walk into a room is something that's really powerful. So um, I would say that story was very significant for me. Um, and I would I'd also say like in terms of like the importance of representation, I, I think it's, it's ineffable or it's invaluable. 
um, seeing yourself represented correctly too is a big thing. As of course in media, particularly in journalism, there's a history of incorrect representation or mischaracterization because people who are in a position of power or influence are inevitably talking about people who are in lower positions. Um, lower positions, I, I use that in quotes. So um, I, I think that's incredibly important just to give people a space to occupy um, and give people a platform. And I, I don't want to be too overdrawn or go back to civic media too much <laughs> because I know I'm not teaching, but we talked about this a lot in class too, that there's like a democratization of media now, of course, because of social media, anybody can have influence, anybody can build a following. It's not just folks who are in political office or who have a lot of money, um, but that certainly helps. <laughs> and um, being able to have a, a little bit of a platform because I've always worked in public media, which is really important to me is working in media that's powered through people, that's independently funded, that's, um, that is for uh, community and neighborhoods is a really big, um, I'm really humbled to be a part of this industry. So I just keep that in mind too, of like, I'm doing this so, that other people can benefit. And that's a really big responsibility too. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you. That was really, yes. I, I also applauded Maria because that was really powerful. And it, that really speaks to, I think, a new way of creating media, bringing media to people in traditional um, spaces that were maybe not as inclusive in the past, um, but also as a way of informing people and bringing them together and bringing in community and centering it. So um, thank you so much. Um, I see a few uh, folks joined us. So for all of you who joined us, thank you so much. Um, I'll give everybody about you know five more minutes if you wanna ask a question now. If you miss part of the presentation, do not worry. We will have a recording up on the website and our YouTube channel, the Media Education Labs channel. Um, so you can watch Shelby's presentation, and we have a link to the um, article and segment that we discussed today in the chat as well. So um, if anybody has a question, please feel free to um, unmute yourself or throw it in the chat, and Shelby can answer it while we're here. Um, otherwise, we will um, close out our session today. So feel free to share. Okay, I think that might be it for today. Um, Shelby, thank you so much for joining us today, for sharing your work and for um, really diving deep into the, the process of creating this piece. I think everyone who joined today got to learn a little bit more about how strategic um, it is for you to create a new story and bring it about to people um, and I think it shows a lot of the intentionality of media. So thank you. Yes, um, as Maria said in the chat, very important work. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for, for the work you're doing. Thank you for sharing it with us. And thank you for joining the Media Education Labs uh, Media Ed Club. 
We are very happy that you could join us and we will, um, we hope to see you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was really fun. I'm really happy that I got to be here. So are we. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for joining. Um, if you missed part of the session, it'll be up on our website and our YouTube channel um, by tomorrow. And we will repost it on our social media. So stay tuned for more. Um, we will be back at the Media at Club next month with another session. If there is anything you'd like to discuss and share, any media, book, um, podcast, TV show, movie that you'd like us to discuss, feel free to send um, your suggestions to, to the Media Education Lab and we'd be happy to take them as well. Um, I hope everyone has a great rest of the day and thank you um, anyone who's watching wherever you are. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. <laughs>